Welcome to After Dark Creations Art and Review. I'm Jen, your artist and monster buddy, here to share my love of cult and genre films with you. Each week, I'll be reviewing films and discussing points of interest from storytelling, cinematography, and iconic imagery. Then, I'll break down how these films inspire and inform my art. Just a heads up, there will be spoilers. This week, I review Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat is a horror anthology film released in 2007 and was written and directed by Michael Doherty, based on the animated short Season's Greetings, starring Brian Cox, Anna Paquin, and Dylan Baker. Trick or Treat has a 6.8 out of 10 on IMDb and an 83% on Rotten Tomatoes, and is rated R. The film tells five stories taking place in the fictional town of Warren Valley, Ohio on Halloween night. The stories are non-linear and loosely connected. Each tale features the mysterious Sam, a burlap sack wearing trick-or-treater with orange footy pajamas. Sam is the enforcer of the traditions of Halloween and terrible fates befall characters who do not obey the rules of Halloween. The first story introduces the viewer to the first rule. Don't take down your decorations or blow out your jack o lantern until after midnight. Emily and her husband return home from the Halloween festival and Emily blows out the jack-o'-lantern and starts tearing down their Halloween display as Sam watches from across the street. She suffers the consequences of not following the rules and her husband finds her corpse among the Halloween display. This is a creepy and entertaining introduction into the film. The second story informs the audience of the deadly consequences of not following the second rule of Halloween. Always check your candy. Charlie, a non-costume wearing candy thief, and Pumpkin Smasher is poisoned by his principal, Mr. Wilkins, who is a serial killer and a bit of a sadist. As Charlie vomits blood and chocolate, Mr. Wilkins reminds him of the importance of following the rules of Halloween. Eventually, Mr. Wilkins buries Charlie's body in the backyard and encounters a later character in the narrative, Mr. Cree, and his dog. Mr. Wilkins finishes burying Charlie's body, then he carves Charlie's severed head like a jack-o'-lantern with his son, Billy. He's passing down some pretty twisted twisted traditions. And remember, he's not following the rules of Halloween. He's subverting them. The third story is all about respecting the dead. This story follows Schrader, Marcy, Sarah, and Chip as they meet Rhonda, a socially awkward savant and Halloween fan. The group asks to borrow some pumpkins as tribute to the children who died in the school bus massacre tragedy in the 80s. The children tell Rhonda of the story of the terrible school bus massacre as they make their way to the quarry. The spot where the children met their doom. The story is told as an elaborate prank for poor Rhonda, but as it turns out, there was truth to the school bus massacre as the group finds the school bus coming out of the water in the quarry. Poor Rhonda gets injured during the prank, but the group of pranksters gets their comeuppance. The undead ghouls rise from the school bus and their watery graves to take out Rhonda's tormentors. Rhonda is the sole survivor because she holds a lit jack-o'-lantern, a sign of protection, and showing that she follows the rules of Halloween. Up next is my favorite story. Lori, played by Anna Paquin, arrives in town with her sister Danielle and their friends to pick up dates for a gathering in the woods. Lori's sister and her friends find dates easily, but poor Lori, dressed in a very modest red riding hood costume, is unable to secure a date. She wanders through the festival in search of finding a guy. Unfortunately, Mr. Wilkins, who is dressed as a vampire and had just finished killing a girl earlier that evening, finds finds Lori first. He follows her out into the woods and we are sure poor Lori is a goner as he bites her on the neck. But we find out Lori and her sister and all their friends are actually werewolves and Mr. Wilkins is going to be Lori's first victim. Mr. Wilkins gets his comeuppance for subverting the rules of Halloween and not properly following them. Practical effects in this story are the best of the film. I totally dig the flesh ripping transformation of the werewolves. The story ends with Sam watching the werewolves feast. I also love the subversion of the trope of girls always being the victim. Instead, these girls are the predators. The last story focuses on the rule of always giving out candy. The narrative circles back to Mr. Wilkins' neighbor, Mr. Cree. He is shown burning photos and ignoring poor trick-or-treaters as they knock on his door or tormenting them with his dog so he can steal their candy. Sam comes to trick-or-treat at 
outside Mr. Krieg's door. Being denied, Sam enters and attacks Mr. Krieg. Mr. Krieg manages to shoot poor Sam and his little body is thrown across the room. Sam eventually pulls himself together and attacks Krieg again. Sam's mask is pulled off during the struggle and we see his creepy yet adorable pumpkin head. Sam is ready to deliver a killing strike with his super sharp pumpkin shaped popsicle when he stabs into Mr. Krieg's chest but hits a piece of candy. Satisfied with the candy tribute, Sam leaves, leaving Mr. Krieg bandaged, wrapped, and injured. Later, he is shown observing the traditions of Halloween and passing out Halloween candy to the children. Mr. Krieg has a price to pay. The photos he was burning go back to the narrative of the school bus massacre in the earlier story. Mr. Krieg was the bus driver, and the poor children that he killed comes back as ghouls on Halloween night and trick-or-treat at his door. All the characters from the earlier stories collide in the street as Sam watches. It's a fantastic story, and I feel the spiritual successor to the creep show film. So let's go over the rules of Halloween so you can stay safe and avoid Sam's wrath. Rule number one, don't blow out your jack-o'-lanterns until after midnight. Rule number two, always check your candy. Rule number three, always pass out treats. And rule number four, respect the dead, especially on Halloween. It is the day they walk the earth. I watch this movie every year around October. I enjoy anthologies so much, and I wish we saw more. There is rumored to be an upcoming sequel to Trick or Treat, but I would also love to see it as a limited series on Hulu or Netflix or Amazon. It would be great to get a little more scares on a regular basis. Now let's get into how the film informs the art. I wanted to sculpt the adorable Sam. Of course, he is the cutest figure of the film. And I know it's a little weird to say he's cute, but to me, he's adorable. I just want to give him a big old hug. I focused on capturing his adorable expression and the playful glint in his little button eyes. Tell me which is your favorite story in the Trick or Treat anthology in the comment section below and share your Trick or Treat art with me using the hashtag AfterDarkReview. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Jen and let's keep it spooky, friends.